the bait and horse, who's now in her fifth year, who really have to turn it on if USC has got a chance. There is Anna Schmreck out of Ontario, Canada, the most outstanding player in the 2021 National Championships. 13 of 26 was Smrek. Only one error. There is Orzel. All three pin attackers, Smrek, Franklin, and Orzel, were, took 70 swing swings against Penn State and hit two balls out of bounds. So that will win a lot of matches. There's Charlie Ferbringer, who you know very well from nearby Manhattan Beach, and a homecoming. Not of sorts, an absolute homecoming. Sarah Franklin, third in the conference in kills per set and hitting just under 300, which is remarkable because she's right at the top of the list of everyone's scouting report. USC will reserve, receive the ball and they need to start this match passing well in order to run that quick offense and keep Wisconsin stressed out defensively. Here is Ferberger, the 5'11 freshman, wearing number 24, had 12 digs against Penn State, the number one setting recruit in the country, has found her way to Madison. Kelly Sheffield said by far her best match. And a service winner down the line, working and targeting Batenhorst. But just to finish the thought on Ferbringer, by far, according to Kelly Sheffield, her best match so far as a Badger. Charlie Ferbringer going down the line right at Allie Batenhorst. Amazing serve to start this match. 24th ace so far on the season for the freshman. Keeping it on Batenhorst again. Out of system, tough swing, particularly against this block and complicating matters. You mentioned it. USC can be their own worst enemy sometimes. Wisconsin's going to put a ton of pressure on USC with tough serves. Make them work against the big block in the front row. Another very impressive win for Wisconsin was at Purdue. A sellout crowd in that one. And Ferbringer, remember, went on a really incredible run to gain momentum. And out of the back row, your first look at Jaden Living, 6'1 freshman out of Dallas, Texas. Good things happen when USC passes the ball. And Jaden Living is a weapon from wherever she is on the court. There is Mia Tuaniga, 5'9 senior out of Long Beach. 41 aces on the year. Seventh in terms of assists in the Big Ten Conference. Smrek away from the block out of the middle and also away from Tuaniga. Wisconsin running their middles is such a big key to their success because one-on-one, -on -one, hard to stop six foot nine Anna Smrek. Yeah, if Wisconsin is in system, in other words, if Charlie Ferbringer is very comfortable and has all of her choices, it is a very difficult situation. And right back at you, Tyra Ariel, six foot one redshirt junior, wearing number 13 for the Cardinals. Excuse me, in, not wearing Cardinal, Cardinal in black tonight for USC. Wisconsin in their road white uniforms. Here is Batenhorst, having an all-conference, if not an all-American season, according to her coach. And I would agree, Batenhorst, good at both ends of the floor. Schumacher, first look, not a good set in transition. Smartly up into the block by Orzel. Deep into the cross-court corner, that ball missed out of bounds by number 21. Julia Orzel, the six-foot senior out of ball. Orzel's very interesting, her career path was starting as an outside hitter, just coming over from Europe, won a national championship, and then spent some time at Libro and now back to the outside. Franklin is so good in reception. Baton Horse not ready out of the back row. Good first contact, and Johnny on the spot, Carter Booth at six foot seven with a tap down. Wisconsin running such a high clip out of the middle. And this is off of a dig. Sarah Franklin puts it in Charlie Ferbringer's hands. And then the gap set, the three set between the two USC blockers. It's not just Sarah Franklin's attacking that makes her special. That's why she was AVCA National Player of the Year last year. Wonderful in defense and also in first ball contact. I love that USC is establishing their middle one-on-one. -on -one. Tough to stop in the middle that time. Wisconsin had a double block in front. Watch Tyra Ariel go to work. She had two blockers, but good heat down that line. Ariel coming in at a 333 clip. She'll go back to serve out of Plano, Texas. Made 31 starts last year. Working on Schumacher. Pretty good out of system set. Quickly to the outside, Pamuina is blocked. Anna Sreck, number 14 in white, sets up a wall on that right side. And 
CC Crawford assists getting out there and closing. Nowhere to go for Falmuina. And the win over number three Penn State at home in Madison. The Badgers outblock the Nittany Lions 11 0. Guljay Guchikan. Oh, what a tough serve. Right down the line. That is a couple of aces very, very early in this opening set. That line to line ball has so much pace and it's barely crossing over the net. Hard to track, and then the bottom just drops out. Beautiful execution by Gigi for Wisconsin. 26th ace for Guchikin out of Turkey. Trubin, very nice pass coming right back, and that's off of Schumacher and down. So Jaden Livens off to a pretty good start offensively. Once out of the back row, and then again front court on the right side. USC's goal tonight is to beat Wisconsin with their speed, create some opportunities by attacking the gaps in Wisconsin's block. Living's had five aces in the match at Illinois. USC had 17 aces in total and lost the match. Perfect pass. Good cover by Ferbringer. Robinson on the joust. Tuaniga loves to swing when she has an opportunity. Good set to the outside. Bamawina off speed, not there. Oh, what a dig by Schumacher, but once again, USC beating Wisconsin with speed. Mia Tuaniga, number 91, the setter for USC, running the gap set in transition. Look at Living's get to that short ball, and then the beautiful feed, and another one-on-one -on -one matchup out of the middle. You're going to see a lot of that from USC tonight. Schumacher going right at the Libero. That's what Nebraska did in that stunning win. Stunning because of the way the ma match went, Holly. Not stunning that Nebraska won, but swept Wisconsin and held the Badgers to 0 94 attacking. And, and Nebraska really went after Schumacher. Lola Schumacher is a freshman in a big position for Wisconsin, and she's taken a lot of heat. Going after her again, and that ball sails long and wide by Jaden Livings. Tuniga is second all-time in total assists. She came in with 4,254, needed 257 to pass Kendall Bateman. So congratulations to Mia Tuaninga. Isn't Kendall Bateman still in first? She is. I meant to say it that way. If I confused you, I will read it once again. Kendall Bateman is still number one at USC with 4,510. Bateman horse with a good chase. Pretty good set in transition, going high hands. Off speed by Franklin, Joust coming, and Devin Robinson into the net. Big transition point for USC, chasing some balls down and getting this opportunity on the tight ball. Look at the battle, and then Devin Robinson follows through, gets a piece of the net. Sorry to confuse you on the setting numbers, Holly. That's all okay. On, I just wanted me. to be clear. Kendall Bateman, 4,500. She's my neighbor, so I had to represent. <laughs> and you did. <laughs> Gosnell on to serve, the transfer from Indiana. Boy, talk about playing with some speed. That was very nicely done. Furbringer to Franklin. Sarah Franklin can get on that ball quickly, and it had tons of pace out to the left pin. But look at the perfect pass by Schumacher. That allows Charlie Furbringer to push it fast to the pin. And lo lots of gap to work with between the two blockers for Wisconsin, and that's what you need to do to beat the big block. Middle blocker, CeCe Crawford on to serve. Trubent, very, very good pass to the outside. Batenhorst still looking for a first kill. Tough swing against that big block, but to the floor. Allie Batenhorst, number 14 in black for USC. Brad Keller, the head coach for USC, told us, look, hitter coverage is going to be so important. We know that ball's coming back, but we can recycle and get a second opportunity. Jaden Livings keeps that one alive, and then Allie Batenhorst kills the second attempt. Yeah, Brad Keller in his fifth year as head coach for USC. He said we've got to play with speed. May be a lot of low throws, trying to attack the block low, not high. And then, as you pointed out, hitter coverage with your helmet on. Batenhorst again. There's the low throw. Good coverage by Franklin. Orzel is blocked. Cover by Booth. <laughs> jousting, jousting. A jousting tournament and one by 6-7 Booth. Carter Booth slam dunk number 52 in white. She saw the opportunity to throw it down and takes advantage of it. Good start to this match. Tied at nine. 
Wisconsin 18 and 5, 12 and 2 in conference, lost their opener at Minnesota and then lost at home to Nebraska. Tight pass, smart play by Mia Tuaniga. Mia Tuaniga, so aggressive at the net, likes to attack, but that one saw she had hands in front of her, just wipes it off the hand, out of bounds. Beautiful save on that tight pass by Mia Tuaniga. Well, Brad Keller telling us that his senior setter out of Long Beach, number 91, back to serve. She is like a gunslinger. She does some special things that off of Livings and out of bounds, the kill to Franklin, who is absolutely spectacular against Penn State and has been so clean. The two matches for Sarah Franklin, Iowa, Penn State, 28 of 65, no errors. Another service ace. That's three so far for Wisconsin. Wisconsin has been executing the line-to-line -line serve, and it's very flat with pace, and it's been giving USC some trouble in serve receive. 20th ace so far, 21st back-to-back -back service aces for number 13, Sarah Franklin, once again the reigning National Player of the Year. For USC, there's three players there, but only one player who wants to pass it. I don't know if anybody wanted well, to pass true. that one. Parting of the seas, that was tough and beautifully placed. Batenhorst high up into the block. Three-nothing run now for the Badgers. There's the low throw, but that was rejected, and USC needs a timeout. That's a 4 nothing run, and the Badgers have carved out a 13-10 to 10 advantage in the opening set. There it is. Head coach Brad Keller for the USC Trojans thought about it for a good little while and called the timeout. So Kelly Sheffield on the sideline, the winningest coach of all time in Madison in 2020. Nebraska is still perfect, and as those of you know, over on Big Ten Plus in a tussle with Minnesota, Penn State suffered their only loss. That was at the hands of Wisconsin. Wisconsin, we talked about them. Purdue right there, Oregon as well. Nine teams currently in the top 35 RPI in the Big Ten Conference. They could get as many as 10 teams into the NCAA tournament. Baton Horst with the kill, back with three-time Olympian and NCAA champion Holland McPeak. A Paul Sunderland, Baton Horst, the Nebraska transfer back to serve. Still working on Schumacher, Smrek off the right side. Good first contact by Smrek, and missed it out of bounds. Interesting, USC left one blocker out on Smrek on that right side, and doubled up in the middle on that play. Paid off for USC. A very rare error, Smrek was 13 of 26 with just one error in that three-set sweep with Penn State. A dominant win by the Badgers. Out of the back row, Franklin finds a small seam and gets that ball to the floor. Sarah Franklin, six foot four in her fifth year out of Lake Worth, Florida, the transfer for Michigan State now with her third kill and still errorless. 70 swings without an error. Incredible. It is incredible. And look at who she's playing against. Number three in the country, number 21 in the country. Here is Schumacher. The lead is 14-12. Ramoina, cut shot easily handled. Orzel with some pace and tucks that ball down inside. USC late on their press over the net to block that ball and the throwdown ends up on USC's side. Discipline blocking today is going to be really important. Very smart shot by Yulia Orzel coming in, hitting at a clip of 269. That's a real plus because she's out there for ball handling, defense, and her all-around play, but giving them some good offensive numbers. Living's an unforced air. Welcome live to Los Angeles inside the beautiful Galen Center on the campus of the University of Southern California, Nebraska. Now with their 22nd win in a row just underway. Number six, the visiting Badgers of Wisconsin.
taking on USC coming in at number 21 with Holly McPeak on Paul Sunderland tied at 10. But since that time, you mentioned that USC sometimes their worst enemy. They're very terminal and sometimes not in a good way. Way too many unforced errors so far right now for some of the young arms of USC. For USC, their passing has broken down at different times and then the pressure's too much on the hitter to try and avoid the big Wisconsin block. There is Brad Keller in his fifth year, 19 and 13 last year. Second straight NCAA tournament, lost to the Pitt Panthers in the second round. Previously, the associate head coach at UCLA. And on the other side, the winningest coach all time at Wisconsin, Kelly Sheffield, now in his 12th season. Four of the last five national semifinals for the Wisconsin Badgers. And they won the singular championship in 2021 when he was also the national coach of the year. Five-time Big Ten champions and three times the Big Ten coach of the year. One of the very best in the business in Kelly Sheffield. Big opportunity for USC as the time is winding down in the regular season. You look at the schedule and what they have remaining as far as RPI rankings. They're currently at number one, but what what they want to get in the top 16. That's their magic number. Top 16 teams will host the first and second round. That's a big advantage to be able to play at home. But the good thing for the Big Ten, nine teams right now in comfortable position in terms of RPI rankings. You look at USC's schedule, obviously this would be a huge one if they could steal a win over the number six Badgers. But then they have Oregon on Sunday, currently at number 11 then at Purdue, at Washington, and then home to Iowa. For Wisconsin, they're currently at number six. And in the RPI for Wisconsin, they are at number eight. So they've got a, they've got a, a lot of work to do to get over those teams to get to a top four seed and host throughout the first four rounds. Lola Schumacher, who has taken over the starting libero spot. Beginning of the year when they were facing with a handful of injuries, when I say they, I mean Wisconsin. Kelly Sheffield was deploying a couple of Liberos, but not right now. Right over the top of the block, saved by Tuaniga after a brilliant dig by Bate Norris. SC's got to have this. One-on-one, -on -one again to Schmeck, and missed it out of bounds. Hustle plays create opportunities, and that's a momentum changer for USC. Mia Tuaniga going into the media table to keep that alive. Ariel goes back to serve. Very rare hitting error. Once again, 101 swings against Penn State. Three total errors so far in the opening set. Wisconsin has four. Perfect pass again by Franklin. Oh, look out. And a Smrek almost tore apart Jaden Livings. What a feed by Charlie Furbringer to Anna Smrek. Anna Smrek just hit that ball out, but she knows. Charlie Furbringer knows how important it is to get Anna Smrek going. And look out below, sharp inside the three meter line for the kill. Charlie Furbringer taking her first of what will become many Setter of the Week awards in the Big Ten Conference. Sarah Franklin, the co-player of the week in the Big Ten. Batenhorst is blocked. Orzel along with Crawford. Wisconsin setting up their defense by serving at the pin and then bunch blocking. Look at them bunch into the middle and close that attack out from the back row from Allie Batenhorst. Wisconsin, along with Louisville, the number one blocking teams in the country. Here comes Guchikin. Chance for Wisconsin again, free ball Crawford, and off the block and out of bounds. C.C. Crawford, six foot three in her fifth year out of Lansing, Kansas, a transfer from Kansas, now in her third year in Madison. Very, very good blocker. Second in terms of active total blocks in the NCAA Division I. Gooch to Ken again. And until that service miss, Wisconsin starting to pull away. Wisconsin going after Faulina and avoiding the Libero for USC. Living's has got a huge upside, but USC, <laughs> they need her to have that upside start to happen right now. Baton Horst again, big swing, and a touch off the defender or at the net, so a score for USC. It was interesting, right before that play, I heard Mia Tuaninga say to Ali, trans. So maybe that meant, hey, you're getting this ball in transition. She gives it to her, and it pays off with this transition kill out of the back row. Living's again, keeping it on Schumacher. 
Wisconsin is playing faster. Good dig in the cross court by Trubin. Wright's own look out. Devin Robinson hit a riser, and Jaden Livings had no chance. Really good sportsmanship that time by Devin Robinson, making sure that her opponent as of now is, is okay, and Livings, Livings is trying to shake that one off. Watch Devin Robinson in the middle of your screen. Great block touch to control it, and then drives on the slide. Incredible pace on that swing, and it catches Jaden Living's high. Yeah, we're going to have a brief substitution. Madison Peach will come on. First, there will be some attention paid by the athletic staff. That was a really, really tough shot. You can see the discoloration to the, to the face of Jaden Living's outstanding 6'1 freshman out of Texas. That's the second ball that's hit her in the head on the block earlier, got the top of her yep. head. This one in the back row. Tied at 10, it's been all Wisconsin, at least in this opening stanza since then, leading 21 to 15. I think Living's a little bit of time and she will stay on the floor. That was a, a tough shot. Balmoina trying to find a seam. Franklin with a really good read. Oh, a good block. Ford out of the middle with some help. First block for USC. USC is doing a really nice job bunch blocking and helping block that ball out of the back row. Transition dig by Sarah Franklin. And look at the two players close together. And Mia Tuaninga ready for the tip. Ford averages 1.4 blocks per set. That's fourth best in the conference. There is Greg Osnell. There's a little perfect first contact. Robinson again. Dug by Gosnell. Chance for Batenhorst. And tucks that inside. Allie Batenhorst with her fourth kill that time. Just turning her thumb down. Going a little sharper inside the block. Batenhorst off to a nice start. Four kills, 12 swings. This is a very, very tough block. Tied with Louisville again for the best in the country. Best in the conference. Second in the conference is USC. Very easy serve. Dug by Trubent, but out of bounds. Sarah Franklin elevated on that one. Actually went over the top. Gala Trubent there, but just could not control it on the USC side of the net. Franklin now four of seven. No errors. That's so two full matches. Iowa, Penn State, and now the opening set. Carly Anderson coming on to serve. We saw her come in a handful of times against Penn State. Good service pressure. Batenhorst well off the net. And that ball's missed out of bounds. Was there a touch on the block? There was. So that'll get to Wisconsin to 23-17 with the lead. Carter Booth going up quick. Gets a piece of Leah Ford right there on that swing. Yeah, Brad Keller, the head coach for USC, was thinking about challenging, but Leah Ford said, nope, got me. Good pass by Batenhorst. Boy, there has been a lot of jousting going on. Good read by Trubent. That quality swing, but missed just out of bounds that time by Jaden Living, still trying to shake off that, that tough tough shot she took from Devin Robinson. USC is picking up balls defensively. They just need to find ways to score in transition. Seventh hitting error now for USC. Set point number one. There's the speed and a smart shot by Batenhorst. Brad Keller told us we were going to see a lot of pace, a lot of throwdowns, use the block. Allie Batenhorst getting her fifth kill on that throw. Madison Peach, who was thinking about coming in for Livings after that tough shot, now will come in for Mia Tuaninga. Trubin back to serve. Outstanding Libero from San Diego, 15 aces so far on the year. No setter on the floor, and it matters not. So Wisconsin needed a couple of set points, and they closed it out on the second. They take the opening set by of the week with Eva Hudson from Purdue and Charlie Ferberger, the setter of the week, the first of her career. <laughs> and far from the last, 11.7 assists and also 
four digs. She had 12 digs in total against Penn State, a match that Sarah Franklin and Charlie Furbinger and Julia Orzel absolutely dominated. Penn State came in as the number three team. There is Furbinger. Manhattan Beach about 14 miles away or an hour and a half, depending. Booth down the line, dug by Trubin. You can see, oh, smart play. And you can see how fast that USC wants to play, even in transition. Watch the libero down the line, Gala Trubin. Just stand her ground, get her platform under that. And Mia Tuninga, fast to Ali Batenhorst, continues to just push it off the black, the block, tooling it for the point. High risk, high reward. Here comes Tuaniga again, handled well by Franklin. You know, that ball slapped up by Tuaniga, but USC unable to follow. Anna Smrek hard to stop on that middle attack. She's up over the block. Tuaniga had a chance, just couldn't keep it up to her teammates. Oh, riser there again. Good serving by Wisconsin. Smrek one on one. Good block touch that time on the outside by Livings. Seems to be okay after taking a really tough shot to the face. Orzol, good sound effects by Yulia Orzol, one on one. Charlie Furbringer has done such a good job for Wisconsin establishing the middle. Watch this free ball. Carter Booth drives, one blocker up, and then one blocker out on Orzol. USC pretty good in reception right now, trying to keep the middles going. Smrek again, going off speed, covered by Furbringer. Living snow out of the middle. Schumacher is beaten to the outside and a very nice play by Tyra Ariel. 13 in black. Tyra Ariel is a high flyer. She is undersized in the middle, but she gets up. Look how quick she is off the floor and lots of power in that angle gets away from Schumacher. There is Batenhorst getting a lot of action. She hits almost 12 balls per set, kind of the same number of workload as taken by Sarah Franklin. Nice cross body that time by Carter Booth. And to your point before first serve, Holly, I know we were over on uh, Big Ten Plus. We were talking about the efficiency and the improvement of uh, Furbringer getting the ball to the middles. The connection between Wisconsin's setter, Charlie Furbringer, who's a freshman, and the middle attackers has gotten better and better. And I believe after the Nebraska match, they really focused on it. And you can see them use it so much. And it sets up the rest of their offense. Good back row, quick combination delivery by Furbringer to Sarah Frank for another kill. Now she has five, still no errors, five kills on seven attempts. Maybe she's just never going to hit the ball out ever again. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, both teams good in reception, going quickly. Falmoina, Donia Falmoina, 6'1", redshirt sophomore out of nearby Long Beach. Didn't play last year, able to put that ball away. Brad Keller told us how important it would be to have all three pins scoring, and Falmoina needs to get going in that category. Very difficult thing to do against the best blocking team in the country. Tied in that category with the Louisville Cardinals. And Anna Schmreck again, number 14 in white. It's time now for our State of Success, brought to you by State Farm, and certainly in a state, a very comfortable and confident State of Success is Sarah Franklin. Just playing airless volleyball right now. It's a team effort, but she has been so good and so smart. And we focus on her offense and her efficiency, but I'm, I'm almost equally as impressed with her first ball contact and her backcourt defense. Sarah Franklin is the complete package. She does it all, and, and teams serve away from her. She's that good in serve-receive. 35 of the last 72 with no errors. Working on Orzel. And that ball is down just in front of Batenhorst. First set, both teams hit for decent numbers, but now you're seeing really high offensive numbers. Wisconsin hitting 667, USC hitting 750. So much more efficient in this second set. I would say so. Those are astronomical numbers. Tough swing here. Batenhorst getting her feet to the ball. Orzel right to the three-meter line. 
Franklin, snapper over the top. It starts with a tough serve when USC isn't passing the ball well. Wisconsin just gobbles it up and then puts it out to Franklin on the pin. High percentage kill. So far, USC siding out to your point, Holly, at 48%. Wisconsin at just under 70. And they're winning the serve and pass right now. Uchtikin right on target. Robinson off the edge of the block of Famuina and out of bounds. Devin Robinson so quick on that swing. There was a block there, but just goes fast on that outside hand of the blocker. Brad Keller, the fifth year head coach for USC, telling us, you know, a couple of weeks ago, he thought they were in the bottom quarter, or bottom third of all the teams in the Big Ten in terms of serve and pass. He thinks they've made great strides. But right now, Wisconsin exposing them a little bit in the reception phase. Such a smart shot. Really good by Franklin again. Wisconsin rolling and they're winning the serve pass game. That's so key. I know it's cliche. Every bit coach tells us that. But so far, Wisconsin dominating in that category. Wisconsin's quality of contact in serve reception and defense is lights out right now. Ah, yes. The American Volleyball Coaches Association have narrowed the field for their choice of National Player of the Year. Will it be the reigning winner, Sarah Franklin, Eva Hudson, or Purdue Mirzik, Jess Mirzik from Penn State, Bergen Riley, or Lexi Rodriguez, also from Nebraska? Those are the players who are in the semifinal round from the Big Ten Conference. We'll get your list here in a second, Holly. Okay. Critical juncture right now. Orzel misses that ball out of bounds. Who else would you put on that list from around the country? You have to look at Pitt. Tori Stafford on the left side, complete player. Olivia Babcock on the right side for Pitt. One of the most physical players. Anna DeBeer having a nice last part of second half of the season. And then Madison Skinner's coming on pretty well for Texas, but it's been a slow start for her. It, it has, it has. And it, now that Texas is uh, gone back to the 5-1 and Maddie Skinner is playing the same role she did in the national championship run last year. I know Texas has been in the headlines, not, not for all the good reasons so of the last couple of weeks. They lost three in a row at home for the first time since 2006. Going back to Sarah Franklin <laughs> down that line. We've seen Sarah Franklin tonight use the entire court offensively. That was that was almost an error. That's as close as she's going to come to actually committing a hitting error. Again, a clean slate so far through two matches and into the second set. That was against Iowa and Penn State. There it is. But the, she was on the ground. She was on the ground. Okay, it's still an error, <laughs> unfortunately. Every time you said it, I was worried about what was going to happen. Well, I don't now we don't have to worry about it. Well, took 11 swings. That's her first hitting error. Came in. Franklin was 28 of 65 against Iowa and Penn State with no errors. So 36 of 76 with just one error. Tremendous performance. Megan Verbeest on to serve for USC. And right back at you is 13 and white. Just love her all around game. Charlie Furbringer is using all her weapons. Watch the middle blocker jump on the quick attack and then it's one on one on the pin. The blockers in the popcorn popper up and down. Open swing for Franklin in the angle. That was some fresh butter to the outside to Sarah Franklin. Smart shot, that ball popped up by Furbringer. Nice dig by Orzel, tough chance and right on target. Quickly to the outside, Schumacher with a dig. Smart set by Furbringer, very smart play because Franklin was out of position. Wisconsin has been relentless defensively, sticking arms up, really shrinking the court for USC. USC's taken some aggressive swings, but Wisconsin is everywhere. We talk about Wisconsin's blocking with good reason. Tied with Louisville, the number one spot statistically in the country. But they're out digging USC right now, 23-17. And that's something Brad Keller is not going to be happy about. Nice play by Orzel. Tough chance. Long run by Ferberger. Brad Keller told us that there are two or three, maybe four more digs out there for the Trojans that we can have a chance to transition. And they're not getting them right now. 
Wisconsin's front line sets up their defense, a big solid block, and then the players behind in the backcourt can dig around that big block. So the first line of defense is that big Wisconsin block. That ball served out of bounds. Wisconsin won the opening set 25 to 18. Took complete control of that opening set once we got into double figures as Franklin will go back to the line. Coming in 1,750 kills, 914 digs. I'd say she's had a pretty phenomenal career. Nicely done. That is Jaden Living's into the cross court. In the first set, USC was having a communication breakdown, but Tyra Ariel takes that pass, steps in, helps out her player in the backcourt, takes it overhand. I like that play. There is Batenhorst, five digs to her credit, doing her part at the defensive end, and a rare shank by Franklin, and I do mean rare. Ali Batenhorst, in this particular rotation, when she's on the service line, she creates a lot of point scoring opportunities by USC, serving good locations, getting aces. Second ace for Batenhorst and USC, four for Wisconsin. Right to Schumacher, expert pass. And on the joust, Carter Booth at six foot seven will win that. But when you look at Lola Schumacher, passes good or perfect 51% of the time. Kelly Sheffield, the head coach for Wisconsin, told us the reason she earned this job is in the big moments, in the red zone at the end of sets, her numbers were better than they were the rest of the match. And that's what you want, someone who can help your team finish. Her counterpart, Trubit, right back, and Jaden Living's number 42 in black. Seemed to recover nicely after getting really, really hammered in the opening set. USC setting away from the side that Anna Sprex on. I like that decision offensively. Go with the smaller blocker, Orgel, 22 in white. I like it too. <laughs> Anna Smrek, not only 6'9", but very, very talented and technically sound as an attacker and blocker. That ball saved. Charlie Furbinger wanted one of her teammates to go after that. But a couple of reception errors, one by Schumacher, one by Anna Franklin prior to that. Living's in USC creeping back into the second set. Kelly Sheffield telling us that uh, Kelly Sheffield telling us that uh, Charlie Furbinger played by far her best match so far and very early in her career now playing in her 24th collegiate match. I continue to be impressed by the connection between Charlie Furbringer and her middle hitters. Setting that three set, that quick gap ball is not easy to do, but she repeatedly puts it in a perfect location for her middle attackers. And Wisconsin looking very sharp. No letdown at all after coming off that huge win at home versus number three Penn State in a dominating fashion coming out to play USC and UCLA. An outside shot to get back into the top four and host throughout the first four rounds. But they got to win out, and that includes at Nebraska. That ball, Guchtikin off the equipment and down just in front. That's a break for USC. They need to continue to put that service pressure on Wisconsin. They've been able to create some point opportunities. Wisconsin is at UCLA on Saturday, then home to Minnesota. Then at Nebraska on the 23rd, close it out, Ohio State and Michigan State. Perfect pass. Allie Hazelwood on the floor right now, backup setter, along with Peach, and the joust is coming. And the crowd is looking for a chance to get back into this match. Taken out of it in the second half, excuse me, Holly, in that opening set. Brad Keller is not afraid to make in-match decisions. And he made a double sub that pays off right there for the USC point. Tough serve and blocked by Peach. 6-2 run now for USC. Make it 7-2. Seventh hitting error now for Devin Robinson and Wisconsin. USC right back in it. The Trojans at 17-7, and seven, ranked number 21, 9-5 in conference. Coming off a split. Beat Indiana 3-1 after losing in five to Illinois. And congratulations to the fighting Illini's Raina Terry going over 2,000 kills. Has had a fabulous career in Champaign-Urbana. Orzel back to serve. The lead is 16-14, one set to none. Hazelwood will stay on.
Try to convert on the free ball. And they do. Nice play that time by Leah Ford, six foot four, redshirt freshman out of Texas. New players on the floor, and Hazelwood in to set this ball, running this quick attack in the middle in transition. I like the numbers, one on one, advantage hitter. Ray Gosnell, once again, the transfer from Indiana. Very, very good in the defensive end and reception. Tough serve on Orzel. Outside to Franklin. And off the block and out of bounds. Franklin in double figures now, Holly. Ten kills on 13 swings. And that god-awful one error. How did that possibly happen? Charlie Furbringer from behind the three-meter line has enough strength to get that ball out to the pin and Sarah Franklin. Carly Anderson on to serve once again. Oh, nice pass by Batenhorst. Peach inside. Beautiful pass by Allie Batenhorst. Really tough serve. That line to line gets on you so fast as a pa passer. Watch Allie Batenhorst get under that ball with her platform, setting up the offense, and then Peach goes sharp inside for a USC kill. Libero for USC, Trubant on to serve. Medium pass, outside to Franklin. Smart shot to recycle. Franklin again. USC block starting to do some work, and that ball just off of Hazelwood and out of bounds. Wisconsin is so good at recycling that ball. Triple block situation. Franklin plays it into the block and gets another swing that they can attack out of the middle. Franklin up front, along with Booth at six foot seven, and Anna Smreck at six foot nine. I'd say a pretty good scoring lineup. No wonder Furbringer spent so much time at the line. That helps. Getting the opponent out of system. And that missed by Batenhorst. Charlie Furbringer is very efficient attacking locations on the court that create problems for the passer. And that's why they're able to score so many points in this rotation. Very low air for both of these teams in the second set. 24th swing. Ali Batenhorst, that was the first error for USC. Oh, smart shot again. And that was against Anna Smrek. Very, very well done by Batenhorst. USC has been working on those quick balls to the pin and wiping it off the block. As a blocker, you feel like you have that ball, and then the hitter attacks, feels the pressure, wipes it off. It's not often that six foot five Batenhorst is undersized in a joust, but she was that time against Smrek. Father Mike, very familiar to fans here in Los Angeles, a two-time NBA champion for the Los Angeles Lakers. To Aniga, well handled. Franklin. Sarah Franklin does it all for Wisconsin. She handles the heat from Mia to Aniga. Watch how she handles this platform right on the ball to target and then crushes it through the seam of the USC block. Awkward miss that time by Franklin from the service line. Thinking about Sarah Franklin and how complete and how advanced her game is. Maybe she should think about Southern California in the 2028 Olympic Games. She is certainly going to be in the mix, and rightfully so. Batenhorst. USC certainly hanging around. Good block touch. Got to make that play. That was really well done by Tyra Ariel working in the middle that time with a block touch. USC had two blockers on that play, trying to get a touch and control it in the backcourt. Missed opportunity for USC. You talked about the middles and how improved they are. Carter Booth, 7 of 11, no errors. Incredible. Yep, pretty clean. But that was a missed opportunity by the Trojans, trailing by three. Wisconsin doesn't give you many, but when you do have a chance, you've got to make the most of it. Back, sir, from 30, Working on Batenhorst and up to the task. Very nice timing, kept off the floor by Crawford. Middle here, right side again, and that ball missed out of bounds. And Holly, you said it, you said it so much to the point. That ball's out of bounds, no touch. Sometimes USC is their worst enemy, and a couple of balls hit out of bounds here. Timeout called by USC. It was a one-point set until moments ago. Right now, Wisconsin up by four. Last week, in Wisconsin gaining all sorts of momentum. 
And look at Nebraska. Home to Minnesota, home to Wisconsin, and then at Penn State. That is on the 29th. Good first contact guy. Oh, what a block. Smreck with CC Crawford. Anna Smreck just lines up on that ball, and there is nowhere to go. Watch Anna Smreck just get on the ball and just smother it with her hands. Yes, she's six foot nine, but again, so technically sound and, and so solid as a blocker. Really good volleyball player. Sarah Franklin again. Sarah Franklin working it through the USC block. USC is one of the best blocking teams in the country, and she's finding seems to attack. Franklin now 12 of 17, set point number one. Similar to the opening set in terms of Wisconsin pulling away. It just happened a little bit later. Famuina going off speed. To Smrack and missed it out of bounds. Looking for a touch, none there. And the Smrack has been relentless attacking that angle deep into the cross court, but that time missing wide. We've seen her miss wide a couple times from the right side. Set point number two, Smrek now five of 15 with three errors. Here is Ariel. Right back to Smrek, gets the touch, good dig by Batenhorst. Let's hope that everybody's okay. There was a little bit of a collision between Jaden Livings and Cece Crawford. And Crawford coming away with a little hitch in her giddy up will get some attention at the other side. A little bit of concern on the Wisconsin side. And the Badgers end that second set on an 8 3 run, hitting for such high efficiency. Anna Smrek not having a Smrek kind of night. And neither is Devin Robinson. A couple of errors getting into that category. But uh, Carter Booth certainly making up for it. Most importantly, Wisconsin up two sets to none 25 18, 25 19. And we talked about how efficient both teams were in the second set. That was good for USC through 19 points. But if uh, Charlie Furbringer in Wisconsin's last six points, four of those were on hitting errors from USC. Amoina working against Smrek. Good read by Schumacher. Brad Keller has got the challenge card in his hand, waiting to see how this opening rally goes. Right side to Smrek again off the edge. So Brad Keller in his fifth year, head coach of the USC Trojans and building a program here. Again, they won uh, the national championship on three occasions, the first all the way back in 1981, the very first, and then back-to-back -back in 2002 and 2003. Original decision on the play, no net fault. Point Wisconsin, USC is challenging. There was a net fault on the, in the middle of the play. All right, so we'll have our first challenge of the night. Two challenges coming in to each match. As long as you are correct, you have an unlimited number, or you keep them, and let's take a look. You can look at the whole play in college volleyball at the Olympic Games. You can only challenge the final action unless you stop the play midstream. Yeah, nothing there so far. That is clean as a whistle for Smrek along with Booth. After review, call is confirmed. No net fault. Point Wisconsin. USC loses their challenge. Yeah, there, is, there was no net violation. It's an early challenge, so USC will have one challenge remaining. Suzanne Lowry along with Christian Krishjak are the first and second referees. Wisconsin 18 and five overall, 12 and two in conference, lost their opener at Minnesota and then lost at home to Nebraska. That was the first time Nebraska had won in Madison since 2013. That ball off of Livings and out of bounds. If you're USC, and we've spent a lot of time speaking with head coach Brad Keller, what do you think his message was in between two and three? And where can they go to try to attack Wisconsin? 
Wisconsin's everywhere defensively, but first of all, it, it's taking care of the things that they can control. Closing up their block, being a little bit more disciplined, and obviously we talked about it from the beginning, passing better. If they can stay in system, they've got the arms to score. It started from the very beginning of this match when Wisconsin, as you talked about it, line to line. They've done an excellent job putting service pressure on USC. Ferberger now looking cross court, and that's where she goes on Livings. Famuina. Nice cover by Schumacher. One slam dunk, and then the second missed out of bounds by Ford. The way Wisconsin is playing defense, they are just shrinking the court. Wisconsin is, excuse me, USC is having a hard time finding open court. 0-5 against the top 25. You see what USC's record is. Right now, their RPI comes in at 21. KPI at 26 and the ABC at ranking at 23. This is a USC team who I think is really dangerous. We see them play with one of the best teams in the country. In the first set, we saw them play till 10s, and then in the second set till 19, but they just haven't been able to play a whole set at that level. A couple of, I think they're in the tournament, barring a big surprise of the USC Trojans for the third straight year under Brad Keller, but Oregon on Sunday. Ranked at number 11 becomes a huge match. And then number eight, that's at Purdue. And I think that match is in Holloway Gym, the friendly small confines, and then at Washington. So still some work to do, but most importantly, getting better by the day. And Spreck again with another incredible stuff. This Wisconsin team had a slow start, three early losses, but they just continue to get better. Their defense today has been so impressive. In the way Anna Smrek is fronting the ball, I, I mean, it's unbelievable. Six foot nine and six foot seven, Smrek along with Booth. And another opposite, Brittany Abercrombie, also played that position this year in Athletes Unlimited and was the, the champion of that league. Came out on top. Brittany Abercrombie has been playing professionally in Poland, Germany, Tur Germany Turkey, and South Korea. Now will play for the PVF in its second season. Livings is dug right on target. Pretty good block touch that time. Chance here for USC. Nice read by Ferbinger. Really good defensively in area one. Leah Ford on the crossbody. Much needed kill for USC. Brittany Abercrombie was a standout 2014 to 2017 on the right side and now doing great things at the professional level and finally able to play professionally in her own country. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. The sport is continuing to grow and grow at the collegiate level and now professional opportunities, including AAU. There are a couple of other professional leagues, the PBF and Love VB. So lots of changes, talent, opportunities. There's Brittany Abercrombie. A rare miss pass by Franklin slaps her thighs. They were on Yanwu on the floor now. That's one of the changes that Brad Keller said we could look for. And Yanwu again, and she's blocked. Really good handwork by Carter Booth, who had 12 blocks, total blocks, against Michigan. Carter Booth is long at 6'7", but it's her eye work that makes her special as a blocker. She watches the hitter and then takes balls away from them. Good to see CeCe Crawford back on the floor. She does wear ankle braces, but a little bit of a tweak at the end of the second set. Peyton Horse trying to throw and has that rejected. Thrown right back at her by Smrek. That's the fourth block in this set alone, and it's only 9-3-7 total now for Smrek in Wisconsin. Anna Smrek just smothers the ball defensively. Not a lot of edges to attack. That ball drifts just out of bounds that time by Lola Schumacher. Leaders around the conference. We talked to you about that. Uh, these are the top two blocking teams in the conference. Kelly Sheffield and the Badgers on top. Just about 3.1. USC right there. Oregon also top. And Wisconsin is tied with Louisville for the top spot nationally. USC is fifth. Crawford very quick off the floor. The, the trend 
for Wisconsin running this gap set. And they don't run a lot of one sets, which is that quick set right next to the setter, which is easy for a middle blocker who doesn't have to move. But that gap set has been really working all night long for Wisconsin. Once again, perfect first ball contact for Franklin. If you're playing against Wisconsin, I don't know who you serve, but Nebraska certainly found a way to do it. Nebraska served Wisconsin very, very tough throughout the course of their three sets to none win. Block on the outside, working against Living, so that's block number eight now for Wisconsin. If you're USC, you look across the net, Wisconsin does not have their tallest front row in there. They should be able to find some ways to score either over the top or through the seams. Ball just out of bounds, but big early lead for the Badgers, currently ranked at number six, and a big reason why this phase of the game. And a Smrex getting in front of the ball. You see the bunch block. The blockers for Wisconsin scoot in. And then again, Anna Smrek just on the line. Look at her take away the seam for Wisconsin. And you know it, Holly McPeak. Blocking is one of the most difficult skills to become expert at if anybody really does. And, uh, and this Wisconsin team is so well coached and so well schooled. Talented, yes, but it's not just that. Yulia Orzel, Yulia Orzel back to serve. 12-5 is the advantage. Wisconsin won the opening set 25-18 and then 25-19. And consistent pressure on Batenhorst. Good swing out of the backcourt. Orzel with a jump bump. <laughs> and the jump bump kill. That cannot go down. No, absolutely not. A USC needs to gobble that opportunity up. A jump bump, obviously they're in trouble, but you gotta move in and take that ball. Mia Tuaninga is going in to set that ball because she thinks it's a free ball. Yeah, the JJK should never go down. Never. That's the, the, the jump, no, the JBK. Jump, bump, and that last play just might make it. The jump, bump, kill by Yulia Orzel. You just don't see that every day. Brad Keller was one very frustrated coach during that USC timeout. With good reason, he got into his Trojans. Here's Orzel. Baton Horst. Look at the traffic over on the sideline. But an expert serve by Orzel. Wisconsin is executing that serve line to line. They've been doing it all night long. But yes, serving into traffic. There's four Trojans down that sideline. And the communication is crucial. Even if Batenhorst had passed that ball well, which he doesn't again here, I don't know where they go offensively. That's just really good scouting, game planning, and tactics by Wisconsin. If you're USC, maybe you make an adjustment, slide that stack to the other side, or spread out the hitters. Batenhorst Baten going to the sideline, and that hasn't happened very often so far on the year. Gray Gosnell coming in to receive. There's Orzel again going to the same area. Falmoina finds a small seam through the block and down. Adanya Falmoina finding some room. She's had a long night, had a big block in front of her, but finds a way there, and USC needs to create some point scoring opportunities from the service line. Wisconsin, another very efficient night offensively. I'll give you the last three, or the last four since they lost to Nebraska, but hitting 342 so far on the night and holding USC to 080. Here is Anyanwu. Still time for USC, but they need to go on some mini runs, and that's not going to help. Since the loss to Nebraska, Wisconsin played Illinois, hit 364, played Iowa 394, and then number three, Penn State, and hit 465, and are hitting 342 so far on the night. Numbers trending up every match, and you can see why. Their offense is a well-oiled machine right now. Well, Ferberger's feeling much more comfortable and confident. Foul Molina crushing that ball to the floor. Schumacher settling in as well. Everything going in the right direction now for Wisconsin. USC needs to pass the ball because when they do, they can score. Adanya Foul Molina, one-on-one -on, -one on that left side for USC, finding open court. Double sub coming on once again. Allie Hazelwood, the 5'11 sophomore out of Madison, Mississippi. Mother Jenny, colleague of ours, head coach at Mississippi State, now at Southern Miss. Coming in as another part of the double sub is Madison Peach, wearing number 23, now in the left front.
Wisconsin cross town at UCLA on Saturday. USC gets Oregon on Sunday. To Ford quickly out of the middle for the throwdown. Surface pressure right there again by Ali Hazelwood. This has been a smart substitution. The double sub for USC and watch the quick attack one on one out of the middle. Four kills for Leah Ford. Nice read. Adonia Falmoween, a very, very good read against Furbringer. I want to remind you, Saturday, number two Ohio State collides with Northwestern at Wrigley Field in Chicago. The excitement kicks off at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Hazelwood once again, 3 0 run for the Trojans. Mentioned they needed a couple of runs, and Booth puts an end to that aggressive set by Ferberger. USC had two blockers there, but a seam, you got to be there quick, close out that seam, form a wall, make her work around the block. Nine kills now for Booth. One line again, working on Gosnell. Not a good set. Smart shot by Peach, trying to recycle right side to Falmoina. Smrek. Peach, the lefty, got a piece of the block. Boy, it looked like there was a touch there, but that ball was out of bounds by number 23, Madison Peach. A rematch between Wisconsin and Nebraska in Lincoln on the 23rd. Penn State going to Lincoln. That ball just out of bounds on the 29th. So still a lot to be decided for the Big Ten Championship. And who will be one of the top four seeds to host throughout the first four rounds of the tournament? I think right now Wisconsin is on the outside looking in. They got to get over Louisville. They got to get over Penn State again. They've got to get over Creighton. Yep, yep. Absolutely right. But I don't think you want Wisconsin in your region if you're one of those hosts. <laughs> Just like you didn't want to see Texas last year either. Or you don't want to see Sarah Franklin. Nobody wants to see Sarah Franklin. 13 kills now for the reigning player of the year. 13 kills on 19 swings. Because I'm not too swift, it'll take me a minute to do the math, but came in 28 of 65. That ball missed out of bounds. So Franklin has taken 83 swings in the last two and a half or two and three quarter matches, if you will, and made one hitting error. One. And she gets a lot of hands in front of her. Peach turn it down the line for the good kill. Holly Hazelwood doing a really nice job stepping into this match with the double seven, getting that ball to Madison Peach on the right. Trubin back to serve. To Batenhorst, very good transition swing, but a better block, Smrek again. The Wisconsin Badgers, seven and four against one through 25. That one loss was the opening Big Ten match in Minneapolis to Minnesota. They're currently at 30-31, not sure exactly. The key wins, of course, Penn State was big. TCU there as well. They have a very good resume. Remember, they lost their first three matches of the year when they were dealing with some injuries. Pretty good opponents. Texas, Louisville, and Stanford became up 0-3. Dug by Trubent, trying to force the middle and thrown down by Smrek. Smrek has dominated this match as a blocker. I mean, she's just putting so much pressure on USC, taking up so much court. They did not give Anna Smrek a block there officially. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they did not. She has six block assists so far. What's amazing about Anna Smrek is many things, but she's in the top 10 in the Big Ten Conference in blocking, and she blocks on the pin. So given the number of attempts, that is an amazing stat. 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1
blocks for set, per set for number 14. Usually you see middle blockers with those types of numbers because they're involved in almost every block. Yeah, she's involved in many fewer. So it's a, a tremendous blocking season so far for Anna Smrek out of Canada. Kill by Anwanyu out of the middle. Wisconsin two points away. Once again, USC looks like they're going to have to regroup very, very quickly and take on a solid team out of Oregon. Mimi Collier, Kristen Klein, very good setter for Oregon. Collier doing most of the damage offensively. And now it is match points, and it has been all Wisconsin, 25-18, 25-19, and even more impressively here in the third. Sage Damro, redshirt freshman out of Howard's Grove, Wisconsin, coming on to serve the first match point. Nice dig by Damro. Cover by Damro. Outside to Orzo, low throw. Good smart play by number 22, and Wisconsin closes it out emphatically in the third, winning at Holly 25-12. You and I saw Wisconsin last week, and they are even better. I thought they were better defensively today. In the middle, connection continues to be awesome. All Wisconsin, very impressive indeed. Hit 337, hold USC to 081. We'll get back to wrap it up also with some special guests from Genji. Hits almost 12 balls per set, kind of the same. Mm-hmm. 